So we, uh, so Digital Currency Group, um, uh, my company, we've invested in 145 companies now. And um, so we're the most active investor in the space. And so we have pretty good visibility um, and insight into kind of what's, what's working and what's not working. And I continue to believe um, that the number one use case is speculation right now. And, and, and that is not a bad thing in that, one, like I think Bitcoin is going to, um, controversial opinion here, is going to displace gold over the next couple decades in terms of the role that gold plays in a, in a portfolio. Um, we will come back to that. Yes, I, uh, I'm sure we will. Um, but, but separate from kind of the store of value kind of gold um, play, I think that um, in order for Bitcoin and digital currency to provide the utility that people are excited about from a, a cross-border payment perspective, remittance perspective, you know, if all of the um, all the uh, all the um, um, uh, friction that could be eliminated by the free movement of money around the world, it, it's not possible unless the asset class, the size of the asset class is larger, unless there's more volume and velocity in the on-ramps, the off-ramps. So initially. The number one use case is speculation. As the market cap grows, you have more more liquidity going in and out of different fiat currencies, and eventually you'll have the ability to operate, you know, as an individual or as a or as a business, exclusively in Bitcoin and digital currency, and completely eliminate or bypass the middleman and all the friction, all the cost. But none of that becomes possible. You don't. You can't. You can't create a better financial system that eliminates all the friction and middlemen when you only have a hundred and twenty-five billion dollar asset class that trades five billion dollars a day. It's just not big enough. So, and that's an interesting point. So, you think that that speculation is one of the good ways to build the col- It's the only of- way. It's the enabler. It's the you. It's the flywheel effect. You. It has to grow in value, and as it grows in value, it becomes more interesting as a tradable asset, and as it becomes more interesting as a tradable asset, you get the derivatives, and you get the futures, and you get the infrastructure, and then you have the liquidity. But the argument is, is what are you trading then? I, mean, I guess the answer is you're trading a future operability or something, you know, you're trading the future use Case. I guess. Well, it's really kind of two, it's two things. One is if you if you buy into my hypothesis that Bitcoin is going to displace gold, mm-hmm. so you're trading into an opportunity. So there's eight trillion of gold, and then there's 125 billion of Bitcoin. So that's one play. And the other is is you're you're betting on the innovation. You're betting on the technology. You're betting on the community. You're betting on this new financial system that is going to get built over the next couple of decades. And that that investment thesis is a little. It's a it's a different analysis. The gold analysis is okay. What is the probability that it captures some of a trillion, you know, and then you you discount that back and you say, okay, it's you know, it's gonna five percent chance it's gonna happen that it's gonna capture twenty five percent. You could do the math; it's still a big number. Whereas if Bitcoin becomes the new fin- the the underpinnings of the new financial system. Um, all of the value that gets tied up in Bitcoin as it's moving around the pipes, it's kind of like a, it's like a working capital analysis. And so if there's five or 10 or $100 billion tied up in the Bitcoin system as it's being used for all these use cases, you can make some assumption as to what the value of the asset class would, would be at that point. And that's not even in, you know, valuing the, the blockchain use cases, you know, using the database for, you know, recording ownership around, you know, uh, digital records rights and identity and all the crazy ideas that uh, we've invested in and you've heard about. So can you think of therefore of Bitcoin, it, thinking through your, your idea with gold and other areas is you need to think of it in terms of option value. What is the probability of it ending up replacing gold and then trying to impute that? My guess is you could probably apply some sort of option pricing model and come up with some fair value, whatever that means. Right, and and you know the small changes in your assumptions have a pretty meaningful impact on Absolutely. the on the on the outcome. And look, and that's why you know that's why Bitcoin will move up or down five or ten percent in a week because the very small changes in money flows, very small changes in perception, changes you know kind of the probability of the that ultimate ultimate outcome. And so again, with gold as the as the in my opinion, kind of the number one uh, use case, um, 
or digital gold, um, eight trillion relative to 125 billion. I mean, for you to uh, you know double your money in gold over the next couple of decades, it's essentially a, it's a it's a bet against the dollar. I mean, it's a bet against kind of the currency. It's certainly, my belief that Bitcoin would perform well in that environment. But but really more importantly, if the world doesn't fall apart and if the value of fiat and the U.S. dollar doesn't collapse. Bitcoin could and should still perform really, really well because you're investing in this new financial system, this technology, this community, this 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 restructuring and rebuilding of the way that value moves around the world. And gold is gold is never going to have more utility. It's never going to. It's it's just going to or not be perceived as this store of value that you put in your portfolio that would perform well in periods of financial dislocation. You know, there's there used to be used to be, um, people used to trade the gold-silver ratio for a long time. And one of the reasons why silver often outperforms in certain times is because it has two two values. One is the precious metal value, and the other is the industrial value, because people use silver for a lot of stuff. And if you kind of think of Bitcoin in the same way, it should hyper-outperform in that kind of magic scenario of devaluation of fiat currency, which probably at the end of the next recession we're going to see some format of, but also it has to price in the optionality of the future financial system, which as you go into recession and you get to more extreme monetary policy, the probability explodes of having to choose a different outcome. That's a super smart way to look at it. That's absolutely right. Mm-hmm.